Right, good evening everybody, let me just uh, pop over, the, here we are, this is uh, welcome to One World, One Blood Bowl, episode 2, uh, I'm thrilled to have with me um, a couple of the same people we had uh, for the first episode, and some new faces as well, uh, and fantastic, uh, welcome to everybody in the chat, uh, I'm going to try and keep more of an eye on chat this time myself, uh, but the lovely Volcajo has also offered to make sure he's, uh, he's keeping a firm eye on chat for me, uh, I'm just going to, first of all, just go around the six, uh, and I just want us all, um, as I said to them before we started, I'm going to be open about this. I tried to advertise this on uh, Reddit, because I really want this to be, as the title says, One World, One Blood Bowl. I want to bring everybody in uh, uh, from every point of Blood Bowl. I want to talk about anything to do with Blood Bowl. Um, and I, it's always wound me up that everyone gets very tribal. You know, you're either Blood Bowl 2, or you're Tabletop, or you're Fumble, or you're a hobbyist. And I, I think that's insane. We all just love and play and spend too much of our time, money, and effort on Blood Bowl. Um, so I, I kind of want to bring us all together and talk about Blood Bowl with people from all over it. And foster those links and get us more aware of each other. And possibly even build some bridges, you know. So that's really what One World, World One Blood Bowl is all about. I really wanted to call it talk Blood Bowl or Loose Women for Blood Bowl. But the first name was taken, the second didn't seem that attractive to people. So One World, One Blood Bowl it is. Uh, my name is Purple Chest, this is, is my Twitch, so you probably know that. Um, my Blood Bowl story starts, I suppose, in the 80s with first edition in my bedroom as a 14-year-old. But I gave it up for many years, found it again when Fumble started in 2003. I've been playing online on Fumble ever since on tabletop for the last sort of five years. Um, I'm very lucky in that I have won quite a few online tournaments and things, uh, even a, I have got a NAF title. Um, but I don't claim to be any good at Blood Bowl, I've just been doing it a long time. I'm old and I'm occasionally lucky. Uh, I also do the Fumble podcast with my good friend Throek, who is also on tonight. So let's hand over to you, Mark. Let's hear about your hey, Blood Bowl yeah. story. Very similar to yours, but just a little bit later on, because I'm not quite as old as you, Dave. But uh, yeah, I started Blood Bowl very similarly at a younger age, but then had a massive break through uni and whatever else. Um, found Fumble in 2013, found the love for Blood Bowl again, started playing online, then started playing tabletop. I also have um, a NAF title under my belt, both tabletop and one online. I don't have any majors on Fumble or uh, BB2 yet, yet being the operative word. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's me. I, co-host the Fumble Podcast with your good self, Dave. Fantastic. Uh, let's bring in the lovely Thor. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to have, to have Thor in with us. Uh, yeah, perhaps not as well known as anyone else to the Twitch stream, so it's about time that changed. Well, I'm hoping it's going to change soon, because I'm going to be starting to paint on Twitch as a uh, streaming service soon as well. So uh, this, this webcam I'm using is going to be uh, aboard for that reason. Um, so I got involved in Blood Bowl in 2015 after the demise of Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Um, I was invited by Frank, who used to run, um, we used to run through a ball. I used to live fairly local. And he went, look, just, just come down and play. I was like, oh, okay, I don't know, don't know what I'm doing. Played my first tabletop game as the first game at Thread. Um, two, uh, two years later, I'm, I'm running the event. I've been running Thread, uh, Thread Ball ever since, 20, uh, since 2017 now. Uh, I brought uh, so during the pandemic, uh, me and a few other guys who helped me with the thread set up Squad Chaos. Uh, we went over to the World Cup together as, as a as a team. And then we decided to make this support network for Blood Bowl because there's so many places developed uh, dedicated to making the best Blood Bowl you can be in tactics and this and roster building advice. There wasn't a space where you can just go, look, guys, I've had a really crap day today. And need to vent and other blood bowlers and you know what people are going through and you can just be there for the people so we set up a discord we've now got 150 members on there um yeah and we, we do all sorts we have hobby nights um we, we, we've got a health uh, channel on there now for people wanting to lose weight uh we, we we're just trying to do everything that we can to support everybody else and on top of that i run a I run black wolf painting studio which is a, a commission painting business um i'm, I'm actually pay, I was painting just before this stream as me you guys commented on uh, and yeah um i've never won an af trophy um i've come second a few times i have got a best painted trophy with 25 out of the 29 blood bowl races um as far as i'm aware nobody else nobody has ever managed to complete every race in blood bowl and i'm i'm four away now 
So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm actually painting one of them to compete in for next weekend, which is a chaos race. So excellent, because yeah. NAF do give you a sticker, don't they? If you've done all the races, and now yeah. we have more, so so no one yeah, has so that I'm, yet. Nobody, nobody's ever achieved best painted in every race. Wow. So I'm ho hoping to be the first. There's a goal. Now I, I didn't mention this to you beforehand guys but do and there's a little private bit in my discord where we organize these things do drop in any links you want me to put when i put these out on youtube and on the podcast and i will put those links into things like the squad chaos discord um if you want to drop one in the chat as we talk you know that that's very welcome too uh, and anyone on here that wants a copy of this for their their youtubes or for anything else that will be available too um, you're giving up your time to be here with me i massively appreciate that anything i can do for you uh you have only to ask and it will be there anything well, Jim, within reasons, but you're a beautiful man. Um, we can talk. Now, Jimmy wants to come in. Let's let's hear from the, the Mr. Fantastic himself. Who are you, Jimmy, and why have I invited you on? Hello. Um, I started playing football when I was 10, believe it or not, with second ed, and then uh, 14, third ed, and then I played it since. And uh, I do love talking about it and watching it and uh, thinking about it, just not always playing it. Um, but there you go. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's it. Okay, shut up, Matt. Or someone ban Matt. Or please. Um, um, but I believe you've got a fumble major, don't you? And a couple of stunty fumble I do majors. Have a fumble major. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I think I think I'm okay at the game. I've I, yeah, I've won two stunty majors and one real major on fumble. And then, uh, you know, I've qualified for Blitz Pit. Way finally. <laughs> yes, there is a, a final of CCL. I'm sure, sure we'll finals. circle around to Blitz Pit at some point. There's a Blitz Pit coming up next weekend. Um, and a couple of the people on this, uh, on this um, event, podcast, vodcast, whatever we're going to call it, uh, are taking part in that. So uh, I'm sure that's something that will crop up again. Uh, let's hear from the lovely Rick Reckless. Hello, Mr. Reckless. Good evening and thank you. Hi, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I uh, I briefly flirted with Blood Bowl a few times. Um, I played third edition with schoolmates um, a little bit, and I uh, played Blood Bowl 1 against the AI, which I've since, re since realized was easier to win than racing my 15-month-old daughter in a foot race. Um, but uh, yeah, and then some second ed with a housemate because he was playing uh, Blood Bowl 1 as well. But then I really, really got into it about four years ago, just got Blood Bowl 2, finally got some decent internet to play online, got the bug, um, found a local league, been playing that ever since as well, uh, a fortnightly local league. And, uh, and then also thought, you know what, I'll be a, I'll be a poor man's Jimmy Fantastic and do some streaming as well. Um, so uh, yeah, I've been, been enjoying that as well now for a couple of years. Um, only thing of note I've really ever won is a, is a chalice. A slightly unfortunate timing because I'm about to win um, Blitzpit and BBSL. But, <laughs> but at the moment, just, just the one chalice on Blood Bowl 2. Yeah, I've won a BBSL. That's, that's nice to do. Um, <laughs> So yes, and you do have a chalice win, yes, which uh, which was I think you had five hundred people watch you as you did that. Yeah, something something like someone said at some point seven hundred, but they, it, it peaks very high and then comes back down, doesn't it? So yeah, yeah we we had a few. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but I mean, really interesting, and I do want to circle back to that as well. Uh, name checking, checking that perhaps a lot of the reason people are streaming Blood Bowl on Twitch is um, is. That fella there, it's Mr. Jimmy Fantastic, who I think broke that market open for, for a lot of us. Um, and I am coming back, Jimmy, to ask you why that's not happening so much anymore. Um, and that might be a reason why I wanted Thor on at the same time as you. Uh, the mental health and Blood Bowl, I think that's something I want to talk about a bit tonight. What it does to us, how it makes us feel at times, and how we cope. Or don't cope. Um, because that's, you know, that's something we all get. Blood Bowl is a game that induces rage. Uh, and that's... And yet we love it still, or we hate it still, and yet we come sometimes still play. Um, I've left out the lovely Volcajo, uh, invited back from last week. Uh, say hello, Volcajo. Tell people who you are. Hello. Um, yeah, PC told us to talk ourselves up, but I don't really have anything to go on. Um, <laughs> if, if one thing, I would consider myself a like professional Blood Bowl community person. Like I don't have major wins. I don't have chalice wins. Uh, but I really do like hanging out with people, talking Blood Bowl, uh, commenting on Rick's Chalice games, organizing uh, local tournaments, organizing leagues, uh, keeping keeping track of the uh, Chalice playoff schedule uh, so everybody can watch it, hanging out in streams, talking to people, and just getting uh, people to enjoy the game. I mean, uh, I've been a 
before I started the serious job, I've been working as a bartender and a DJ. And that's what I like, having people to enjoy stuff, like have a good night. And uh, I'm trying to bring that to the community, to some extent at least. Um, How can you say you've got no achievements when you're the Jeff W. Wemdorf champion? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for those that don't know, Jimmy also twice a week uh, runs a, a wrestling thing on his Twitch, somewhat randomly. Um, which takes a lot of people from the sort of Blood Bowl 2 and Twitch community of Blood Bowl, makes them into wrestlers and pits them against each other with the AI deciding what happens. Is that is that fair, Jimmy? <laughs> Throw eggs and cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> I am, but that's all good. Um, and, and I appear, uh, as most people think I do, playing Blood Bowl um, with my eyes firmly shut. So, yeah, that's that's a fun thing. Some people quite enjoy it. And at the moment, yes, we have Fugonomic and Steve Motti in the chat. Uh, and they would tell you that the Scouse army are dominating the Jimmy Fantastic wrestling world right now. Uh, and, and indeed, yeah. I think that's probably true. Um, let's, let's come back, first of all, to one of the things I promised I wanted to circle back around to. Um, let's start just with Blood Bowl and mental health. Um, who wants to talk to me about that and... and why it does to us what it does to us, and how do we cope? I mean, Thor is the person to start this. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, I think it is. So, yeah, um, a lot of the stuff that I've been focusing on recently, um, probably in the last 18 months since COVID uh, hit, hit the world, um, was helping people's mental health, not just within the game. Uh, it, it, it's outside of the game, and showing yeah. that Blood Bowl can be a good release whether it's actually playing the games, getting online, playing on the, the online communities, just just painting. I mean, I, I, I've struggled with mental health. I've had a horrendous past two years. Some of you uh, may, may know a bit more about that than others. And if it wasn't for, for the guys at Squad Chaos, um, there, I probably wouldn't I probably won't be sat here, to be honest. Um, that's not, not easy to admit, but it's the truth. Um, but I use painting to help me de-stress from, from a day. Um, it's one of the reasons why Black Wolf Painting Studio is called Black Wolf Painting Studio. It's the Black Dog. It, it, I, I, that's how I get rid of th those negative thoughts, those, those negative feelings, is sitting down, clearing my mind and painting. Now that now that tournaments are back, it's given me something positive to look forward to and a reason to paint more than just, I need to clear my head. And then when you get to those tournaments and you see those guys that you've not seen for, for two years or something... Um, and feel the love of the the tournament blood bowl community it's refreshing i mean we we had a moment at, at throat ball uh, probably about 8 8 30 on the friday night and there was myself uh there was glow worm and nasgob the three squad chaos captains we were sat at the admin desk and we saw a physical sigh from everybody because everyone had come in they were a bit cautious you know can i go close to people can i not do, do they want a hug do they not uh, everybody had had a beer by this point, and we're just relaxing. And everybody went, "Ah, oh, yes, th this is this is what we've missed." And yeah, it's it's been a big part of um, big part of everything. We, I've, I've, we lost a good friend during during COVID due to mental health. Um, yeah. And and yeah, just anything anybody do to help somebody just who's not having a good day, whether it's blood bowl related because they've had a bad game. Or they're just having troubles in their life. It, anything we can do is, is what we need to be doing. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I mean, I completely support that. I'm an associate member of Squad Chaos, and I haven't been as active there as I want to be with, with everything else going on. But I mean, Mark, we on the Fumble podcast have talked about mental health quite a few times. Yeah, we? yeah, I I've suffered, still suffered myself uh, from various issues, mm -hmm. um, but Blood Bowl has been well, not so. Blood Bowl, yes, but more more fumble for me, really. Um, and when I look back to where I was eight years ago, um, to where I am now in terms of my mental stability and things like that, and it's not just about the game, like thought it's about the community. You know, I mean, if you think that without fumble, just excuse my son walking past. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I would have never have met you. Dave, I would have, I wouldn't have met like, thank you. I wouldn't have met people like Mr. Joshua and Harrod and all these friends across the world, internationally, that 
that have helped me in in times of desperate need actually at some point um but falling onto that is is the blood bowl aspect and yes i think just changing the tact slightly in terms of does blood bowl cause or help or whatever with mental issues it all depends how you play it doesn't it mm. i think if you are uber competitive it can be a real strain sometimes especially if uh, knuckle doesn't provide does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it's it's one of the things since I've been Twitch streaming, which is, has only been since February of this year. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly new at it still. Um, I have had a lot of feedback that people think even when I lose, I don't seem to rage. I don't seem to get too upset. Um, let me tell you, it, it, it bothers me, but it's one of the reasons I've never committed to a schedule so far is there's days I just can't face Blood Bowl. And it, it, if I lost or if it all went bad, I, I just, you know, I don't know that I'd be in a good place. So I don't want to commit to say, you know, every Tuesday I will stream Bubble. In case one Tuesday, I just don't feel like it. You know, in my world, there's a lot of rejection. A lot of people know, some don't. I'm an out-of-work actor. So there's rejection constantly in my life. And, you know, I can deal with that. I'm a big boy. I'm used to it. I've been 20 years in the business. But there's some days you just don't feel mentally strong enough to throw yourself out there, get absolutely thrashed, and still, you know, put a smile on your face and keep going. Uh, and to have someone to talk to about that or to have a place where you can vent that is, is fantastic. And that's, I know what Squad Chaos is, is partly about. But but is there times when Blood Bowl's bad for us? Is it is it part of the problem sometimes? Or I mean, it, we, we've heard from you know both Thor and Throwek that it can be part of the solution. Can it also be part of the problem? I mean, it can so be a problem. Depends. So it depends yeah. if, you've got, if you've got a basement as big as Rick's and a fridge as <laughs> unstocked as Rick's. <laughs> <laughs> you can certainly get a release that way, can't you? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I've always told jokes that, you know, I think the average Blood Bowl tournament should be sponsored by the NHS um, because so many of those guys need to get out the house, need to see other humans, and need to form those contacts. And you can really see that happen at Blood Bowl tournaments. So I know I am joking, but I kind of also mean it. Um, like all the best jokes, there's a little bit of truth in there. Um, I mean, Jimmy, not in the Rick one, by the way. Right? Yes, yes. We we don't genuinely believe Rick is murdering people, um, but we'll come to why that that joke is is there in a sec. Um, Jimmy, you are playing a lot less Blood Bowl uh, at the moment than yes, you you have yeah. done in the past. Is, is that about Blood Bowl hurting you? Well, kind of, kind of. What happened was I had like physical problems, which then led to mental problems, and then. I, that led to me just not being able to handle adversity in Blood Bowl at all. <laughs> and now that I'm physically okay, I should still be okay, but I'm not. I've still kept that, kept that unable to deal with diversity. Diversity? Adversity. I'm okay with diversity. Yeah, let's all just have straight white men playing Blood Bowl. That's... <laughs> Those goddamn Germans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, let's reassure yeah, so everyone that can't. is a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I still can't handle the adversity, so that's a, that's a shame. So like now I just really limit the amount of blood ball I play, and then it's not so bad. And do you think there is a, a level of sort of just mental fortitude you need to be able to, yeah. you know, face this game, which can... It, it you... depends. It depends, obviously. It depends on your attitude to it, doesn't it? You know, yeah. Like, for me, I, also, I had unrealistic expectations, because as, uh, as the streamers here will know, you cannot play as well when you're streaming as when you're not streaming. And so I kind of wanted to get the same record that I would get as if I wasn't streaming when I'm only like paying half attention. I'm not even half attention. I remember Ducky saying that he'd lost concentration for a turn and that's why he lost. And it's like, I never have concentration for any <laughs> turns, you know? But I still expected to have the win rate that I would if I did. And that was stupid, obviously. But I just couldn't like lower my expectations to the proper level. <laughs> yeah, so living up to our that. own expectations of what we can produce. I mean, that's putting yeah. that own pressure on us, isn't it? Which I'm... Yeah. I'm sure Thor would say is, is one of the roots of perhaps just asking too much of yourself. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I love about the Blood Bowl community compared to all the gaming systems that I've been involved in, the game itself naturally weeds out when all costs players. You, you cannot be a diehard win at all cost player and enjoy playing Blood Bowl because the dice will just say to you no every so often. Yeah. 
Um, I've, I've seen it happen. I've seen it uh, happen to Davo. I've seen it happen to some uh, to Kors, some of the best players in the world. You sat there watching the game. He's just going, I can't not roll ones. And that, that's that's dice. And I think you've got to accept that level of uh, masochism to play the game. Um, yeah, it, it's. But the, there was an interesting article written by Jip that was on the NAF site uh, about probably about twelve months ago about tilting. Um, I don't know whether you guys have seen. Just it. for a sec, thought I've just been asked to turn you up, and I've got you already at two hundred percent. Hang on, one sec. I, I, I will try and move the microphone closer to me. How's that? Okay, that should be good. Thanks, dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there was um, an article written by Jip on the NAF website about tilting. Yeah. Um, and if you've not read it, get onto the NAF website. It's a really good analysis of dealing with the the swinginess of, of the game. So you could be absolutely loving life, winning the game, hands down, and then things start going bad, and how to keep yourself picked up during the game. So not to give a bad game to your opponent as well. So I'd definitely recommend uh, giving that a read if you haven't done. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very easy, isn't it, when your opponent is raging to just not like them or to think, oh, God, you know, you're ruining my experience. Should we perhaps pause and think, what's this other person, this other human feeling? Or do we just think, no, they're being toxic, keep your crap to you? Is, is there a difference between tabletop and online in that sense? Ooh. Uh, uh, I probably would say yes. Um, I think people are more likely to hide behind a key, especially if, if you can't see your opponent. You're more likely to, to hide behind that um, or ab try and abuse somebody through the keyboard than if you if you can see them or if you sat across from the table to them, you tend to be a bit more polite about it. Yeah. Um, I know um, Eric, who, who was in the chat earlier, um, said he only likes playing fumble um, when he can see people through a Discord chat. Um, because you, you get a better experience, you, you're, you get the yeah. banter with the person, and it's not just, oh, for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, um, when you mess up, it's not just abuse through the keyboard. Yeah. I mean, I've been really encouraging, as some people know, I run the 145 Club on Fumble, where we help new players, new coaches, whether it's to Blood Bowl or to Fumble, and I've been really encouraging people to try and use the voice chat within the Discord server there to chat as they play, because not only can they help each other, advise each other, but it, it just it humanises the person on the other end. And it starts to build those links within a community that makes you feel part of it. And I just think it's a really different game, Blood Bowl, if there's a human there, rather than just it becomes a computer game against just a random person. And I think that can be a very different experience. I mean, it very much depends how you see it, right? Like, if you're a community person or if you're a try-hard gaming person. I mean, uh, between the few of us, I can see there are different people here already i mean like jimmy you are very focused on playing the game streaming the game and it doesn't matter who's on the other side right like it's it's more or less like i will i want to play i want to talk to chat i want to entertain chat um i want to win this game um and if the other one wins i don't care i'm upset i lost the game i'm upset right no, not always. I mean, well, uh, you know, Rick will remember. I played him in uh, in BBSL just recently, and we were both on, and you know, and that was great, wasn't it? Fimey was on as well, and that was a big laugh. Like, if you're going to have people you know, and it's different, isn't it? It's different having people you know on, but most but, of the time they're just anonymous people. And but I'd how do you get to know them, Jimmy? Didn't speak to me. Well, I'd rather not. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and now, I'm really I... ecstatic about the fact you can hide chat on Fumble now, by the way. Yeah. Squirrel was just saying it's brilliant that like that might make me play Fumble again now that you can hide chat because yeah. yeah. I didn't want to listen to somebody type moaning about the dice and that's all he said. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, dice, dice whining is a whole. We could do five hours just on dice whining, couldn't we? Um, and how reasonable it is. I, I've always thought it's kind of insane if you say to someone, please never mention the dice in a game that is 100% about dice. But if someone just constantly whines about dice, that, that definitely isn't okay with me either. So there's a, even I have a line there somewhere. Now, I've really deliberately kept Rick Reckless slightly on the bench during this chat so far, because, Rick, I, I don't know how you do it. Anytime I've ever seen your stream, win, lose, or draw, there's a smile on your face. You're positive, <laughs> you're upbeat, you're happy. You don't seem to tilt. Is there a secret? Are you on drugs uh. <laughs> no 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 drugs can we have some <laughs> <laughs> right yeah um no that i guess there's a there's a few things um i don't even know where to start so um 
for starters, I've, I've always enjoyed being as competitive as I can possibly be in a game, but I'm okay with winning and losing, but I give everything I've got. I've just always been that way. My friends used to call me like overly competitive man. It was a nickname. Like I just love competing yeah. and uh, giving it absolutely everything. But then afterwards, like I'm mostly okay with it. There are times when it takes its toll. So like chalice games, I'll do a lot of preparation. I'll think about it an awful lot. Um, blitz pit and stuff like that. And, uh, and afterwards, I'll, I'll be like uh, shaking. I'll be thinking about it over and over again in my head. And kind of Mrs. Reckless just have to look after me a bit. And we'll try and chill out and watch something. So there are times when it takes its, its toll on me when I've been knocked out of a blitz pit or a chalice or something. Or even if I've won. Even if I've won a really difficult game, like my brain can just be all over the place. And it can affect me. Um, something like, like ladder games, less so. So, so yeah, I, I do find with Blood Bowl, it can have negative and positive mental health implications for me and, and presumably for others. I think on the most part, it's, it's, uh, it weighs heavily towards the positive, though. Um, it's a good time to talk about it, isn't it, with the COVID? It's such a clear example. Like We've all been under the magnifying glass with our mental health in the last two years. And uh, I think any streamer um, would... would have similar experience to me in that they've had a lot of messages from people saying I had a really tough time but like your stream and just kind of spending time because it does it does feel kind of like hanging out with somebody like yeah. th there is a large part of that I know it isn't quite on the same level so you know but it, it's not so far away you know spending a lot of time in someone's stream chat and I, I appreciate that as a chat member as well as as a, as a streamer and and I've had a ton of messages from people and and I say back and I don't just say this to like I don't know make them feel good or anything but it really helped me as well streaming through covid really really helped me it gave me something meaningful to do it filled a massive void in in you know socializing and spending time with other real people and uh and and so yeah i i think on a whole blood bowl was very very positive for me and i know it has been for others uh in the last two years um during covid um but yeah but the, yes there are times when um i don't feel like turning on to 200 people and, and, and playing Blood Bowl because most people that struggle with mental health on certain days or at certain periods know that, you know, you, you start to think, oh, what, what do people think of me? And so if, if you know that people are then going to be watching you and analyzing your moves and listening to what you say and maybe analyzing that and you start to overthink, they're probably much less than you're then starting to think on your bad days. So, so they're, they're, you know, you've got to be careful with it as well. It can be a very positive tool. But I, I completely understand some people sometimes wanting to play Fumble or Blood Bowl 2 if they're maybe having a bad mental health day, but they feel like Blood Bowl might help, not wanting to talk in the chat. Sometimes that's beyond our capability on a really bad mental health day is that level of socializing, but it might just help to just, just switch a game on and, and, and play that for a little while. So I completely I, agree I, with I, you on that, Rick. Completely agree with you. Sometimes I'm, I'm certainly in that position where I really want to play but I just don't want to engage with anyone. I just, yeah. you know, but then you can't rely on the AI of BB2. Hmm. Well, I mean, I actually, That's I had another a, conversation. about two weeks ago, I, I was in that mood and also because of childcare moods and things, I, I really couldn't commit to a stream where, you know, I was going to be spending half an hour between games doing other things and then maybe having another game. Um, and I just, I played some Blood Bowl 2 privately but someone noticed through Discord, because it tells you what games people are playing, that I was playing. And they said, oh, no stream. And they basically then sent a message, I'm really upset. I really wanted to watch you play today. Um, so I shared screen. And I had a, a stream for one person uh, and chatted <laughs> with them as I played. And it was, I mean, it was someone that had, had been on the stream, not loads, not someone I already considered a friend. Um, and it just, it, it was lovely, actually. They were really nice and kind. And they really appreciated that, that at, at a bored moment, I gave them that. And they... And I could cope with that. I could cope with one person. Um, but I, I didn't think I could cope with... Uh, I'm not going to say 200, because I don't get 200. That was such a brilliant, humble brag, by the way, Rick, considering <laughs> you, you mostly get 300. Um, I couldn't cope with, you know, 15 people questioning every decision I made that day. Um, but just one person who just wanted to chat and watch someone else play Blood Bowl, I, I was fine with that. So sometimes there's... You know, even the most robust of us, and it's nice to hear Rick admit that there are days he thinks this isn't a day I can let 200 people watch what I do. That I'm not, I'm not up for that today. And I hope that makes everyone else out there feel that you know, even the the very nicest of us um, has those days where it's it's not to be for him. Um, 
Wow, what a depressing episode of One World, One Blood Bowl we've had so far. When, when you did that on my screen, you were pointing to Jimmy. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> I mean, one of the things I've really enjoyed recently, um, I've actually joined two tabletop leagues um, since moving back to Warrington. Uh, I've joined the, the Water Bowl League uh, with all the guys up in Water Bowl in Stockport, and uh, there is names after names after playing that league. Um, and I'm getting my ass handed to me in that. But I've also joined a local club um, who started up playing Blood Bowl. This is the first season they've ever run a Blood Bowl season. I've been able to go down there and give back to that community and help new players come along has been such a boost for my own mental health. Um, I, mean, I turned up for my first game. I got uh, it was like I was given three hours notice. This guy needed the game. He said, "Yeah, I'll turn up, whatever." He said he's got Skaven, and he turned up and he had his Skaven in a bag. They, they weren't even glued to the base. Uh, I had my, I had my biggest case with me, which has got a second head Skaven team, and I said, "Look, do you want to borrow? Do you want to borrow this?" And he borrowed my second head Skaven team to play against. It was, mo- it was mostly da- da- <laughs> to my benefit, so I could see what the p- players were and the positions were. But being able to get back and get new players in and be able to talk to them and see their enthusiasm rubs off on you and it just helps relight that spark for Blood Bowl, which sometimes we, we do lose a bit of enthusiasm for it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I just had to, to flick to uh, OBS doesn't cope when my alerts fire and I don't necessarily seem to be able to turn them off for this. I'm going to have to work on that. Uh, and they end up in an endless loop, so I have to click something else and then click back and then they stop. So you were slightly spoken over there by my ridiculously loud... Um, alert stream yeah, store so can i ask you to to repeat it in case it was utterly lost yeah i was, I was uh, basically saying that it's uh jo- joining a, a, a new local league with with new um basically new guys to blood bowl who've picked up bb20 uh, as a new game they, they've seen gw re- re-release it and feeding off their enthusiasm for the games rekindled my enthusiasm for tabletop blood bowl in leagues because I've, I've always been a tournament player rather than the league player didn't really like the progression of teams and stuff like that. It may have been the old league I was part of. But, yeah, it's been been really good to for my own mental health to, to get through and, and pick up that on their enthusiasm and help them develop their new league. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. Now that I've got a slightly more regular life, I mean, my basically my training work basically uh, stopped with COVID and, and sort of said they're never going to use me again. So I, that used to keep, take me off travelling all around the country. And now that I don't, I actually perhaps maybe could join a league which i never thought i could before and i've got two options one is the the edinburgh castle blood bowl league down in central london which uh, i've always said they'd have me in and i you know i know a lot of those guys and that'd be great and i think if i do it that's probably got to be the one because there is one about two miles from my home but it's five guys playing in a scout hut who've never been to a tournament never played online never played anyone outside of those five guys in a scout hut and is it kind of arrogant of me to think that they don't need me turning up, do they? That's not going to be good for their league, is it? Well, no. that, that's what no, I thought even about. Even if you had snotling. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> that's, that's what I thought about this this local league, the fact that most of them have... have some of them have played Blood Bowl before, some of them have played Blood Bowl from yesteryear, apparently, when my second game against them. But most of them are brand new. But they were really thankful for me coming down and sharing my knowledge about Blood Bowl and how to build teams and stuff like that, and actually being a person rather than just clicking on internet guides. And they usually say, oh, we might have played two or three games, but because there's myself and there's another guy who's come down who, who's a bit more experienced in this type of thing, it's keeping the, the Blood Bowl League going. Yeah. And then I'm running a tournament in, in Liverpool on the 13th of November. A few of the guys are now going to come into their first tournament. So it's getting them involved in the tournament. It's building that Blood Bowl community. And I've mentioned about uh, people streaming on Twitch. I'm like, oh, we didn't realize people were streaming on Twitch. So they're now looking at, uh, basically looking at you guys to, to watch Blood Bowl on Twitch. So yeah. th- th- they're, they're joining this this big international community of tabletop and, and online Blood Bowlers. Well, I mean, that... more if they're like with Thor. And PC, don't be worried. Like, it, it depends on how you do it, right? Like... If you're just walking in there, taking your dwarves, stacked with guard, trashing everybody, um, winning it uh, like within 60 minutes, leaving, saying bye, thanks for the game, and thanks for the drink I'm taking, um, of course that's shit. Yeah. But like when I organized my local league, right? Um, it stopped throughout COVID, but we always announced when we played games at my house. I mean, uh, I have a rather big living room. I can fit like three tables here. I've few more rooms where I can put up tables. 
So we basically have practice sessions then. Like you look over to the other table, talk about strategies, talk about builds, whatever. And then you show like, oh, PC's on and he's playing his Chalice game. Oh, what's Chalice? Yeah, oh, cool. That looks interesting. Uh, rather old man, but maybe still worth listening to him. But um, it, it depends how you approach it and what you want to achieve there. If you want to see it as community building in a small, do it. It's like having a small stream. You can have people over at yours. It is. I just, I just want to pick up on something there about what you've been talking about, tabletop tournaments and things, uh, tabletop league. I've recently joined, rejoined the Nottingham one, which is near where I live. Um, and I, I do have a little bit of social anxiety and things like that. So I really desperately wanted to play my first tabletop game. But it took me so much to kind of dig in and visit this Yeah stranger that I'd never met and only talked to on Messenger about organising a game and all I'll say to anybody that's in a similar position is go, just go because even though it's really hard to get there when you're there, it's so much fun and then you can come away and just have had a really good game um, so like UPC I mean don't, if you've got a tabletop opportunity, take it take it. I mean the local one would be so much more handy, I just don't want to you know, disincentivize them from playing Blood Bowl. Um, nor do I want to walk in, you know, Billy Big Bollocks and say, oh, you know, whatever. That that That's not me either. Um, Obviously not. Far from it, right? <laughs> well, let, let's come back to Rick. Um, you are, you know, at the moment, uh, it, I'd say it's between you, Rick, and uh, you, Jimmy, and Andy Davo as to perhaps who's the most sort of recognizable figure in Blood Bowl right now. I mean, Kefo may well have that, you know, be in that conversation too but when you first started playing on tabletop was that the case and how did you find it walking into a room and people knowing hey the rick reckless is here um no i i wasn't at the water bowl i my streaming had only just started so so that they 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 love taking the mick out of me now um with it which is great but but no i was i was an unknown uh variant there <laughs> quite quite humbling in a in a in a good way, like at the NAF tournaments, people often don't know me, right? So um, I, I've gone to like NAF tournaments with 110 people when when I, I have I have been successful on the streaming and I might get three people over the weekend go, wow, I'm such a big fan of your stream, but it's like three people out of 110 that seem to really know me. So it's uh, it's not yet, so, uh, which is why podcasts like this are great, right? Because weirdly we are a somewhat split community yeah. between the platforms, which is really bizarre. It so is. it's nice to bring it together a bit more. Um, yeah. So I really like this, but yeah, no, I've not had any issues where I've been stopped in the street for an autograph or, or anything, you know. I mean, I, no. I don't know if any of you have met Thor before, um, or, or even know of him, but it's uh, hi Thor. Know. Um, <laughs> but it's it's kind of the one thing I thought if I have something that's positive, it's that that I do seem to be a bit known on Fumble and on Blood Bowl Two and on Tabletop, and hence I have got the connections to perhaps you know get some people like this together and get us talking together. Um, which I thought could only be a good thing. Uh, and it's something that interested me, and I, I hope it interests people in the chat too. I, I, I mention over there because that's where my second screen is. So when I look over there, I'm not not just looking at my nice bottle of whiskey. I am looking at what the chat people are saying. Um, and I know I've missed loads of it because I'm trying to stay on top of this. And lovely you know, lovely Jimmy and lovely Volker are making sure they're talking in the chat. And I know Cor's here and answering loads of questions too. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, I, okay, I mean, this is this is. What else does everyone want to talk about? We we've got some more time. I've got all sorts of lovely people here. One thing I wanted to come back to a tiny bit is competitiveness because it's a little bugbear of mine. Uh, Rick said something really interesting, so I wrote it down. I think it was Rick. The difference between being competitive and being all about winning, um, and which of those do we feel it's it's more sort of reasonable to bring to Blood Bowl? I love competing. I can't. I can't deny I like winning. I do. But I'm much more interested in a competitive experience, even if I lose it, than an uncompetitive one where I win. You can't, PC, can't you can't play dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> Only ever dwarves, yes, that's true. Well, that, that kind of links into what I wanted to talk about as well, which was, if I give you the scenario, it kind of fits it. Um, so my first tabletop league for Nottingham, um, I managed to stall, stop the score for the first half. But I could have scored on turn three, second half. And I could have stalled out the rest of the game. So tabletop, first game of the league. I want to win. 
Where do you stand? Now, if it was online, if it was Fumble or Bubble 2, I'd be stalling that. I would, uh, no, no question. No question. I'd be stalling that. But in that situation, I even said to my opponent, uh, so, what's your thoughts on stalling then? <laughs> and his response was, well, stall and wait and see. So, when I first started playing Blood Bowl, somebody said something to me, and I can't remember for the life of me who it was. It was about stalling. And they said, stalling is the greatest mark of respect you can give your opponent. Yeah. Because if you stall against them, it's because you want to waste time because you think they will score back against you. Okay? And there's no better way of showing respect to you by saying, look, you are going to score if I score. So I have no problem with stalling at all. I have no problem with being com people being competitive. I mean, it's what Blood Bowl's about. I mean, you can take snotlings or goblins, and you can still be competitive with them. They can be a lot they're less competitive, but they are still competitive. I mean, everybody knows uh, top top end players who've lost games against goblins once again because the dice say so. Yeah. But it doesn't stop you being competitive. It doesn't stop you wanting... If you're down 3-0 to, to try and just go, I want to be 3-1 because that way you've at least scored. You've, you haven't been nil. There's something you can always achieve in the game. Uh, that's, for all, that's you, an you've just frozen at the moment, by the way. Oh, no, you're unfrozen. Good. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting way to look at it, that is. Um, yeah. I did, I did score because I, I kind of went against everything I believe in that moment. Because I wanted my opponent to have a good time. To have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. But like inside me, have a drink then. Like have a drink and like wait. What's happening? If you can fix it, I mean, it's part of the game to break a stall to force a score. So like that should be exciting for for them. Like I used to be like that. Like oh well, let's have it more interesting because it doesn't matter like in the grand scheme of things. But no, like the game, if played in leagues, if played on online in competitive formats, it is about winning. Make the experience around it fun, but make the game as competitive as it can possibly be. Everything else is just crap, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm going to come in on what Thor said. It's Despite saying that I, I'm not all about the win, I'm about... I, I, I love competing. I love that process of being competitive. Um, I don't want to be in a game where I don't feel competitive. I don't mind losing, but if I feel I wasn't competitive, then I'm, I, I can sometimes feel that that's, makes me sad. If I'm 1-0 up and I've got a 2-0 at turn 3, if I score it, I either like you and want you to have a good time, or I don't respect you and don't think you can beat me. Um, if I respect you in any way as a Blood Bowl player, I'm I'm stalling that out. Which I feel is a bit of a confession after what I said. You found me out, Throwek, haven't it's, you? That it's difficult because when I scored, I just thought, oh, I don't know, I probably I've got like five turns now to really try and stop him, so I've got to up my game. Yeah. Like like Spleggy says in chat, it says not stalling is like saying doesn't matter how many turns I give you, you won't score, which is not respectful. But that's not how I saw it at all. It was a case of right, I've got to up my game. To make sure he doesn't equalise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, if I was if I was one nil up already, I would probably score to go two nil up because even with five turns, he's not scoring two or three times. Yeah, I get that. Um, um, if I was if I was if it was nil nil, and I'd probably try and stall it for as long as I can because it's less chance he's going to draw the game against me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yes, and yet. On tabletop, is there that more pressure to not stall? I think so. Because people are giving up their physical time to actually be there in a room with you? Is that... But I mean, it... if, if you're in your little five-man scout hut, then they'd probably go mad if you tried to stall. You know, like, I, I did a league with, like, there was me, uh, there was a guy from Fumble, and there's a guy who's good at games, and then there was, like, three beginners. And, uh, and then one of the... The one from Fumble stalled against one of the beginners, and he did not like it at all. Like he was nearly like wanted to fight him. <laughs> He's like he was really, really, really not liking it. Whereas I still stalled against him, but I did it more subtly around the halfway line, so yeah. it didn't feel so bad. Whereas the Fumble did it right on the goal line, and he, he really hated that. But so, I mean, yeah. just, just tell them that it's part of the game and it's the puzzle to solve. Like 
I mean, well, that's what, we, I, that's what like, I tried to sell it. Yes, of course. Like mo mo most of it have played, mo most of us have played against Kfog, right? Like the man is quite good at stalling, <laughs> and he he makes it he makes it a thing to like set up the most difficult stalls possible, even though it doesn't make sense sometimes. He just loves the challenge of it. And the other hand, it's a nice challenge to try to make him score, isn't it? Like yeah. that's that that's part of the game. Like. It is. It's such an essential part of the game. It's more important than just taking your two DBs on the on the halfway line, is it? Yeah. Like, and it's also about creating a position where even if losing or even if you can't stop the score, they're not in a position to stall. That is an absolute skill that's essential to good blood ball play, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm quite... But I think um, it all depends on how you see stall in it, right? So there was a, there's always conversations on the Facebook blood ball community page about stalling which gets shut down pretty quick which is hilarious in itself Thor knows what I'm talking about but it all depends on how you perceive stalling right? so dwarves you could technically say that if you that slow advance is stalling the score isn't it yeah it doesn't just have to be I'm going to sit a square away from the end zone surrounded by a couple of players that that is stalling but so is that slow grind up because I'm not scoring because I don't, I don't want to move my runner six squares every turn. Yeah, I mean, as Jimmy says, you can, if you know what you're doing with Blood Bowl, you can reasonably easily stall on your own touchdown yeah. line, let alone on the halfway line. You don't have to be on their touchdown line. I think to newer players, it looks different, if that makes sense. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I think just be aware of your format and be aware of your opponent. So... Um, if, if I'm against a very, very new coach, I, I don't need to stall. It's beneficial of me to score as many touchdowns as possible so that stalling issue isn't an issue. In, in NAF tournaments, it isn't really an issue because once you've played game one, you start to get ranked on win records. So soon I'm playing k or Dio unless I've had a terrible tournament, yeah. you know, in which case somebody else is going to face me, but then face somebody else closer, <laughs> closer to them. So, so that's fine. In, in tabletop leagues, it maybe takes a little bit more kind of... I, I've, I've taken the, the, uh, the lead off K-Fool a little bit on this since I've got better. It certainly didn't need to do this initially. But now I'm playing like Slan in my tabletop league before I was playing Vampires. So, you know, if you're letting me stall with Slan and Vampires, you're, you're doing something pretty wrong. <laughs> so, but, but it barely ever comes up because it's really, really difficult, um, my, my games from, from the word go with those teams. So as long as you're aware of the format and, and your opponents, I, I haven't found... I've been, I've been able to be my very competitive self without seemingly ruining the day for any of my opponents so far, hopefully. Uh, are <laughs> we like, all oh. willing then to sign up to the statement, if I'm stalling, it's your fault? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? That is one of the, that is on the Facebook pages, that is generally one of the schools of thoughts from the more experienced coaches. If I'm okay. stalling, you're not playing very well. Now, I, I, we... think for Rick, I think for Rick is though, if I'm stalling, it might be turn 16 and it's Blitz Pit and I had a massive <laughs> brain fart. <laughs> um, now, there has been a couple of things that just happened in the chat I do want to talk about. Uh, I don't know if you guys have all got my chat up as well as this lovely screen. So uh, the first thing is Thor. Um, Santa from Exeter says, I need to tell you that budgies are better. <laughs> it's a, a reenactment joke. Both of us do uh, historical battle reenactment, and he's in a different regiment than I am, and he's ah. basically saying his regiment is better than mine. Okay. Nerd. Yeah, nerd. <laughs> uh, the other thing Damn is, right. Damn right. um, we do have the, uh, I believe, the lovely Rolex Naf in my chat, who I was mentioning to Jimmy Fantastic the other day. Um, I just want to ask Rolex, how many teams do you have? Because Jimmy found it unbelievable the number I named. Dizzy Best says he has, she has a mug for you, Thor. Hey, Dizzy. Good to see you. Yeah, lovely to see you all in the chat. Uh, I presume now Andy Davo's game is over because we have some people in chat. So um, we're not going to repeat all he the first half He did, half raid, hour. Did he did and I, I missed it because that was when I was dealing with the multiple alerts. So I should have said a big thank you. Um, so I'm hoping that Rolex Naf gives us a number, but I, I hear he's got sort of 300 to 400 teams. 402. No, that's people. That oh, we, people, here. okay. Um, I think Rolex has uh, that many teams. So one of the things, and I'm just going to have to swap screens again to kill this uh, this endlessly repeating uh, alert. There we go. Um, how much is too much to have spent on Blood Bowl? Both in time and money and amounts of resin and metal and paint 
and brushes and dice, particularly dice, that you have in your home? What What's too much? Is there a too much? Uh, it, it, it equals how many dwarf teams you own, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Uh, you've got to have a dwarf team, haven't you? Even if it's that lovely Star Troop, Star Wars one. Uh, no, I, I, I don't actually. Oh, I, I own the Chaos Dwarf team for that. Um, I do own one dwarf team. Uh, it was the very first team I ever did for Blood Bowl. Um, uh, Fourth Rud 2015, my first event. And it also won my first Best Painted in Blood Bowl as well. So it's a, a Santa dwarf team that I, I sculpted out of an old Avatars of War Berserker set. Um, so yeah, I, I have one. I've used it at one tournament. The one tournament I, I met Hef. Um, I got stitched up and got told to go and ask Hef what the uh, the best way to play dwarves is. And he gave me all the advice. Um, and for 45 minutes, I couldn't get a word in edgeways. And he called dwarf players every which way from under the sun. After which I managed to get a word in and said, I'm actually using dwarves. And he spent the next 45 minutes telling me exactly what he thought of me. So love you, Hef. There you are, Jimmy. There's your exact number. The last we've heard is Rolex Naf has 346 different and distinct Blood Bowl teams. I wouldn't even think there was that many different like teams you could possibly buy. That's crazy. Um, that's that's the hobbyists. I've I've said all along. It's the painters and the hobbyists that keep Blood Bowl alive. They're the real ones supporting this hobby and keeping Glames Workshop interested, not us. I paint, right? But as a hobby, rather than anything else and I do like to paint but I literally recycle my team so I will either paint for other people or I will buy something myself and then sell it on afterwards I don't tend to <laughs> keep stuff just, yeah. I mean, to be honest like the, the question is in general like it's not only the painting it's not only the minis it's also some of us are Twitch streamers here. I mean, I'm a hobby Twitch streamer, but like there are professional Twitch streamers here. Um, and you sometimes wonder when people drop like 50 subs in the chat or whatever, right? But it's the same on Twitch as it is with minis or teams or whatever. It's whatever you want to pay. If you want to pay somebody 500 bucks for painting a team, great. Thor probably will very much appreciate that. Um, it's it's fine if if you if you enjoyed uh, Rick's chalice winning stream, drop fifty subs. Fine. If you want to see Jimmy Fantastic play a game of halflings, drop a thousand dollars. It's fine. <laughs> Jimmy will absolutely do that, and he'll he'll dress naked and paint himself blue if that's what you've asked. Well, well, that's not. Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I, um, that's I, I am going to have to. Start. I, I would wearing a bikini and floating around on a banana in a hot tub. Yeah, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, there's a limit to... Be fair, Throy could do anything for a Scotch egg. <laughs> yeah, well, wouldn't, wouldn't we all? A nice, a nice bacon butty and you, you've got me. I'm your slave. Um, Dan Altito has just said that the right number of teams for him is N plus one, where N is the number of teams he has now. <laughs> is that... I mean, we're... I can't, we can't deny we're addicted. Can we... And isn't getting addicted to the resin and the painting as bad as to the playing? Isn't this a hobby so, that, that grabs us all that way with some level of our addictiveness? At, at fear of giving a boring answer, if, if you're putting bread on the table for your family, and, and I'd morally argue, but we could talk about this separately all day, you know, giving a bit to charity, you know, your bit to charity, not a bit to charity, uh, then yes, absolutely spend as much as you want. So if you're living in a mansion and uh, you're, you're installing irrigation in a third world country, uh, my card. Then spend millions. <laughs> Go ahead if you want to, you know, and, and that's all relative to each of us. There's times when I shouldn't spend a fiver on Blood Bowl, and hopefully I don't on those weeks. Uh, and then there's times when I've got a bit more, and I, I absolutely can. And, and yeah, from a streamer point of view, it's amazing when someone can donate generously. That's obviously incredible. And, and, but I, and, and if somebody just all they can manage is um, a sub a month, then that's amazing. But I'd hope that somebody wouldn't even give a sub a month if they couldn't afford it. If that was like significantly affecting them or their family yeah. um, at that period of time, then then absolutely we we most of us wouldn't want that, obviously. Yeah. Um, so so it's very relative to in each individual at each individual moment. I, I think we're all all comfortable saying that, aren't we, Jimmy? That that really, you know, if you want to donate, if you want to subscribe, that's fantastic. But it's not a hundred percent of why we do it. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. You know, people are welcome, certainly on my stream, any time. They don't have to even be a follower. Um, but anything on top of that, you know, it's, it, it's kind of strange, isn't it? But it, it, it's the modern world, so I've decided to I get mean, used I, to it. 
anybody's welcome on mine because I have no subscribers whatsoever. So. <laughs> what I really like, what I really like, free rain. Is, like, it hasn't come over to the blood polls, like the streaming, so much. Um, and it's not a thing in Germany. I did that for my last tournament in Berlin. We had like a, a charity auction. Um, in the UK, it's much more common. In the US, it's much more common to say like, oh, we're wasting our money on this hobby. Uh, why not give back to some extent? Like five a year, a tenner there, whatever. Like giving back. Rick, you've done uh, charity streams. Um, I remember that. Yeah. I <laughs> spent a ton of money there um, because I thought it was a great was a great idea and um the the twitch community hasn't picked up on that too much and i wonder if it's a thing outside of the uk and the us so much because it's certainly not so much of a thing in germany for tabletop tournaments so uh pete uh, no peter d yeah peter d uh, tabletop yeah, so like a tabletop legend in germany he, nobody on he, twitch will know him but he's the uh, nicest man you will ever meet and i know how nice rick is meet peter d <laughs> please he, he, he honestly is the nicest guy in Blood, uh, Blood Bowl, period. But he once said something to me, which he's, he's really stuck with me. Um, people in, in Germany don't believe in charity because to them, charity means that the government has failed. And so I, I think, I think it, every, every country deals with charity in a different way. In the UK, in the US, it's a lot more community-based and community-driven. Um, and I just want to give a shout out, by the way, to absolutely everybody who helped Threadball this year. Um, I don't know whether you guys saw, we raised 10 grand in a weekend for charity. That's for that five grand each yeah. for Mind and Roy Castle Lung Cancer Foundation. Um, and that was through a charity auction on the day. Uh, we had a ra oh, we had a massive raffle, and we had we had all sorts going on. Um, uh, uh, Crystal McDoll uh, did I think it's 550 quid she did. For a charity stream, charity painting stream, um, which is the inspiration for the charity painting stream I'm going to be doing on the 11th of December, where I'm going to try and paint an entire Blood Bowl team in 12 hours and then raffle it off. Wow! I, I mean, think Squad so. Chaos does do a lot of charity stuff too, yeah, doesn't it? As well as Thread Bowl, and I know that's a thing you're really into. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, into it so we can give it a shout out on the podcast as well. Yeah, chat's gone a bit cool, crazy cool, on this. Um, I mean, Kefo, another one of the uh, the lovely European friends we have living in the UK, you know, says he feels very similar that, that you know, from Scandinavia, where he comes from, I'm sure there's very much a culture of, of the needs that are filled by charities in the UK seem to be more filled by governments in some of those other places. And someone else, I, I want to uh, name check them. Uh, there we are, BB Jock says it is an old stat that the 85% of charitable giving in Europe as and when he got this stat was given in the UK. Um, that clearly we feel there's a need in the UK that we need to be meeting through charity that elsewhere isn't. Charity doesn't need to be there to do that. So that's it's interesting. It's not very blood bowl as a chat, but it's it's an interesting thing that we've just happened across. I, I, it, like, and to make it even less blood bowl and even less interesting, it kind of comes down to the population's um, ideas on tax. If yeah. you're happy to be a high-taxed population and have the government look after everybody that requires it, then fantastic. And if you'd rather not get taxed hardly anything, then morally, I really hope those populations, which pretty much includes the UKs, are, are prepared to then give generously to, to charity and do their part there, because that's kind of the two options, really. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, people uh, miss out and are, are in bad situations. There we are. But, uh, um, mental health, government taxation, and, uh, and how, how, we, how we cope with tilting. There's, there's a, a Blood Bowl chat for us for this evening. But no, to, to bring it back onto Blood Bowl, I have found the, the Blood Bowl community as a whole are a very charitable lot. Um, and people just try and do absolutely everything they can for you. Um, when, so, I've, like I said, I've been running through it since 2017. Uh, most of it was on my own, uh, all the preparation on my own. This year, I had, I had a group of 10 guys from Squad Chaos doing all the preparation work the donations work the the admin side of things the refs and they all just gave up their time freely they just went look what do you need me to do and we're looking at six months preparation for these 10 guys including myself like p people like glowworm like nasgob like woodrum and th these guys have been absolutely stellar and then we get to the weekend and there's 30 or 40 guys not all not all squad chaos just just random guys who've turned up for the tournament who were there literally back in court said, look, if there's anything you need us to do, we had four guys that went round um, after every round and wiped the tables down to make sure they were COVID, COVID clear. And they just went, this is my task for the weekend. I'm happy doing this five minutes work yeah. and just did it for us. And it, no matter what 
um, tournament you go to on tabletop, this is what people are like. Is it me that's cut or Thor? No, we've lost you. We've Thor. lost you, Thor. I don't know if you can hear us, but we've lost your audio. We can see you, just we can't can see you. We can't hear you, my friend. While while Thor tries to comes back, I'll I'll just say because uh, because Volk shouted out my charity stream, but Stolen XP did one the year before, which inspired mine, and Andy did a massive one this year. I, I and and uh, and I I'll struggle to do another one for a bit because of uh, Zelda now. Um, and so you know people have picked up that mantle before and after, and uh, and I don't know how often the Blood Bowl Two community more than yearly could manage um, something like that. Maybe they could do six months, but certainly yearly is pretty good. And the community was amazing for all three of those. I couldn't believe uh, how, how much was was given over those streams. So and so, as yeah. content creator, stolen charity streams created some of the best Blood Bowl 2 clips ever. Yeah. If, you, if you think the Dimmy Chair clip is funny, watch Stolen's <laughs> clips. <laughs> That's above and beyond. Well, it, it, it's inspiring me. I mean, I never did. I always said I should do something to celebrate when I reached 1,000 followers, and I never did. And perhaps a, a charity stream rather than just a selfish stream is, is the way to do that. It, 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 you know, that feels like something I would enjoy doing. Um, and certainly, you know, I mean, one of the reasons I'm very passionate about mental health, I, I talked about this on the podcast, so it's not new, the Fumble podcast. Um, you know, I had a friend kill himself um, just before Christmas. And, uh, you know, we're approaching that time again. So uh, the last thing I didn't say it is we'd be nice to people all the time. Uh, and, you know, call your friends and occasionally text them if you haven't heard from them. But particularly in the run up to Christmas, it, it's a brutal time. And with the COVID kicking off it, it's a time that we desperately do need to be nice to people um, that's when my friend couldn't cope and that's when a lot of people can't cope it, it's this time of year that is the hardest for people uh, oddly this time and valentine's not surprising is another one that really hurts uh, let me just uh, get rid of that repeating uh, thing again there we are that should kill it um and, and I do want to move on because, you know, when I trailed this, I did promise that one of the things we would talk about, because it's it's the hot thing, is Blood Bowl 2020. Um, I have used up an hour of everyone's time, so if anyone needs to disappear, you know, I, I'm not going to blame you. I did ask you for an hour. But, but last time we did an hour and a quarter, so I, I do plan to wrap this up. I don't want them to be too long. But I do just want to touch on Blood Bowl 2020. Um, I know we've got Thor, who uh, run and organized the Thread Bowl, which created a lot of noise in the community, so I want to ask him <laughs> about that. Uh, Volcajo has also uh, been running a, a tournament recently, so I want to bring him in on this. Uh, I know Rick's been to a tabletop tournament. Uh, there's a brilliant story about Jimmy Fantastic at the NAFC and Purple Goo, which I hope he's going to tell, and if not, I might. <laughs> um, so I want to talk briefly about Blood Bowl 2020, and particularly about tournaments. Uh, and one of the things that Volcajo, who is, is being fantastic in terms of the support he's offering me, and Mark is doing the recording of this, so, you know, again, no one works alone, no one's an island, this wouldn't be here without other people helping me. But one of the things he, he said we might talk about tonight is the results of, was it called Monkey Bowl, Volcajo? Yeah, it's just that um, uh, Kefo, um posted them in his discords. Um, and if you look at the top five teams, the top... Four of them are Underworld, and then it's... Underworld. Um, yeah. Is this a problem for us? So there's two things. Is, is How is 2020 for you, uh, and how are tournaments, and are Underworld a problem? So that's three things. I, I'm not good at counting. I, I don't think Underworld are a problem. I, I think Hackflem is a problem. I'm your Huckleberry. Okay. Um, that's. I mean, what other stars are you going to take? Skitter. Sk doesn't exist. Oh yeah, he doesn't exist. He's dead. Anymore, he? Yeah. Hack Flem is ridiculous. At He's cheaper moment. than he would be if you like built him by leveling him up. Like, yeah. So that's insane. Anyway, isn't it? Like compared to what they used to be. So he's really OP. And then people like tier tournament organizers tier Underworld too low as well. So like there's those two that combination as well as just Underworld being good having. Having free snotlings, isn't it, on the field is like ridiculous. Having up to fourteen men on the field is is pretty incredible. I, I, th I think when GW altered the roster to be one gutter runner, one blitzer, three line rats, and then potentially brought the rat ogre in as well, and then swarming with the snotlings, it's completely changed the roster. And because we've not had, um, like for example, BB, BB3 isn't out yet, um, and we've not had the 
tabletop tournaments to basically show how this has changed. Tournament organizers are struggling how to tier tier Underworld properly. And then also the the, the incumbent star player meta that's happening at the moment. Um, I mean, one thing we're looking at doing for Thread for next... We've lost you again, Thor. Yeah, we've lost you again, Thor. So we, we don't know. One thing you'll do for Thread Bowl next year is... Ah! No one's know. It's a secret. I think Start it's next episode with it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? Swarming. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear you now? Yes. Okay, I've, I've changed the microphone. Um, so one of the things we're looking at for Thread next year is to ban all real book stars. Of the ten ball stars that we've we've had the miniatures made over the years that we sell for charity, and these will be based on ten star players which we think are acceptable within the blood ball community. That's like stunty teams need a big guy star player yeah. if they want to take it. Uh, they also need like goblins need a second ball and chain, which is what fungus always use. So one of them will be a ball and chain, but there won't be a Morgan Thorg. There won't be a, a hack phlegm. There won't be a Griff. Because these are the ones at the moment that are causing the problems. Have they have they shat the bed with stars, Jimmy? I don't think they shat the bed. No, I think it's just it's just a problem with NAF, isn't it? The thing is, like the, what happens in leagues, it's the same things what happened in Necromunda, all like uh, all kind of you know more time, all those kind of games workshop games, in that the best players win more, get more money, get more experience, that the team gets better, and then it just keeps snowballing and snowballing, and it's just like brutal, you know, like and, and that happened with every every campaign system games workshops ever made that snowballs out of control. So making the inducements more than make up for that is great because that stops the the better player. So I I've, I've always been on the side of like better stars and stuff, but then obviously then it relies if if you're doing a NAF tournament, then it relies on the organizers uh, you know, not letting you have Glart or Morg or Flem, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And Griff. Um now, vampires. We've talked a little bit about Underworld. Um uh, Threadbowl taught everyone to fear vampires though what, what's going yeah. on there so what we figured out was that vampires when they have access to two skills or they can spam pro are horrendously good because pros got better in blood bowl 2020 it's now a three plus rather than a four plus so they're a lot more reliable which means that the animal and they're also a little bit more reliable because of animal savagery as long as they can punch somebody, they're definitely doing that action. Yeah. Yeah. So, so as a team, they've got more reliable if they've got or, or the skill or the pro, uh, the pro or whatever. So, therefore, your strength four or ad, edge four players are doing ridiculous things all throughout. Hip, and hypno cheat on a two plus usually yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. crazy. Um, okay, um, quick I, com quick confession moment then on animal savagery. Hands up if you thought animal savagery was going to be a nerf. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a nerf, yeah. Okay. Um, I, positive Rick. I, I've said many stupid things in Blood Bowl, so, so forgive me for being smug for a moment. I've, I've spent months shouting down everybody that said that in my chat. I said, no, <laughs> the changes to vamps are incredible. They're going to be so much better. Yeah, I, I just, I, I love my vamps. I really do. And Bloodlust is horrific. And the three plus hypnogazing often fails, and I saw the changes, and I went, "Wow, vamps are going to be good." I'm not yeah, a vampire. I get coach. loads of stuff wrong. I just happened to get that one right. <laughs> I'm not a vamp coach. Maybe Rick can answer it. Like, is it a massive difference though that the positioning works the other way around now? Like... I, I prefer it because often yeah. you want vampires to go into tricky positions, and they're quite good at that with the edge four, and you often have them on dodge. Much harder for the thralls to get there. They're much more likely to start where the thralls are. Um, and, and also, like, obviously, there's loads of things I could go into, but also the fact that you're then armor rolling your thralls so that they're less likely to be removed is just, yeah, and, I, I, and you I can, love the sound you of can, it. You can punch a vampire now. Yes, you can. Yeah. 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 And That's no right. vampire leaves so, the pitch. On a fail, they just stand exactly. there. They don't run off. They're, they're there again right. next yeah. turn. But the thing is, animal savagery is a massive nerf to wild animal, isn't it? That was the thing. That was the thing that's not disputed, I don't think. I don't think that's disputed still. That, that was the main thing for animal savagery. With, with I don't think vampires, it is. The, 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 the main thing is the massive buff to hypnogaze, isn't it? It's 2 plus and it takes all their skills. Fight, fight, fight. Volcajo, you don't think it is? No, that was no. me. Oh, well, sorry. Thor. Yeah. Stop sounding I, so German. I, I <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so... 
now that you can put a lineman next to a Minotaur, knowing he's going to blitz when you need him to blitz. But it, the more kill so skills not, you give him, the more that lino is dead. Yeah. But you know that he's going to do that critical blitz rather than going, no, I'm just going to shove my finger up my nose for the turn. But you know he's going to do it five times out of six anyway. But every, right. so <laughs> we've all played Blood Bowl. We know the turn that we need him to do that blitz on that ball carrier to crowd surf him. He's going to fail that. He's going to roll that wild animal. That's your fault for me. Guarantee that he's going to be doing that. Him. You know, that's the but, thing. But now you can get. But now you can get him to do it reliably. I just I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it. I guess it's just a. I guess it's a. It's a matter of opinion, isn't it? But I don't think it's worth knowing that you can activate somebody. Like the trade-off is losing your tackle zones and stuff sometimes, which you never could do as wild animal. Yeah. And uh, and then like needing the babysitter, which you didn't need as wild animal. And just there's just there's pros and cons, obviously. But like I think the pro, the cons def the definitely outweigh the pros for me. I mean, it okay. depends on the team. I mean, people said it already, but like, for example, if you can uh, get a pack team with a red ogre and you get the orc to babysit him. He can basically just run off and do stuff reliably while the other two are just roadblocks. That's the thing. But if we're not talking... Really. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It, that's now you've got to babysit the roger and the troll? No! You don't have to babysit the troll. You don't activate the troll. Oh, get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm making you take Underworld to a tournament. You get to choose. Are you taking the troll or are you taking the roger? Who is going on shoot your me team? If I took the roger. I would want you to literally shoot me in the face if I took the roger. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Rick. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd take the troll. Unless I'm having fun. If I'm really tryharding, I'm taking the troll. Yeah. Volk. Troll or ogre or rat ogre? On which team? On an underwhelm team. Oh, oh, no, troll. Yeah, troll. Four. Why would you take the rat ogre? Well, because he's reliable now, he's got animal savagery. He will definitely no, he blitz. He will. Teammate, he's got frenzy. He's all sorts of good things. No, it, it, it's the throw teammate for me. The throw teammate. Yeah, the, throw uh, teammate. Uh, the, the whole the yeah, whole point uh, of the troll is that you've got that very ambitious, unlikely one turn throw teammate option with the troll with a rat ogre. You have it. Okay, and let's let's got, let's change the question up. Makes you makes you underworld like makes you gut runner more likely, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, and I think the gutter runner is the key to the sprue-based oh. design that is Underworld now, isn't it? One blitz, uh, one gutter runner. Yeah. Yeah, but such a, such an upgrade. There, but there, so area. deliberately yeah. done just to put the easy bits of plastic they already had in a box I, and sell it. At the end of the day, Warming. GW were a business, you know? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. not saying it's bad. Actually, sprue-based yeah. design gave us a fantastic roster that's much oh, yeah, more fun there. than the old one. Oh, you mean Old World Alliance? Uh, well, that's the one. I, what, what I want to come to next is, okay, I am going to change the question. So now I'm making you take Chaos Pact. Yes, I hate you that much. Um, and I'm also going to make you take three big guys. You have a choice. You've got a Troll, a Minotaur, a Roger, uh, and uh, an Ogre. Which three are you taking? Neither. No rerolls. Not the roll. No not the, ro not the Rat Ogre for Jim. Uh, Mark, let's go to you next. Which one are you um, leading? I out? wouldn't. I would. I would follow my good friend Small Man uh, and, and take no big guys. No, I'm saying you have to take three. Which one are you leaving out? <laughs> oh. I'd probably leave out the Rat Ogre. I, I like the Minotaur yeah. Strength Six Blitz up the horns. Okay. I, would, I don't know. I would take the. Yeah, I'd probably leave out the Rogue. Rick. It's fairly close out the Rogue and the Minotaur, but yeah, I, it probably is on balance the Rogue. Sadly, yeah. And Volk. I would also take the Minotaur, but I just think that there <laughs> could be a case for a Roger. And I mean, like, if you look at it, Pack do quite well in the current statistics. Um, obviously, star players, yes, I know, I know, I know. Two big guys and a star player, yeah, different build. But I think they can do fairly well, and I've seen them uh, in, in a few tournaments already doing all right with three uh, uh, big guys. In the new rule set, and everybody said packed or shit. Now, I don't think they are. Wow! Simply Sensei is dropping the troll. Uh, Candlejack and the Cod War are both dropping the Mino. Um, so I have to say, I'm with the five guys here. I'd drop the Roger, but yeah, chat does well, not there... necessarily agree with us. And isn't that well, wonderful? Are there BB two people that would be like, 
what the hell is Chaos Pack? <laughs> yes, sorry, we should explain. There's been a team for many, many years which has, it's called Chaos Pack. Look it up. Um, and, and Blood Bowl 3 will eventually let you play with it in about well, about eight years after it launches when we they finish all the DLC. The fact that it's very likely that as soon as BB3 comes out, we're going to have a new rule set for Blood Bowl. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, that is could, the Games Workshop we... model, isn't it? Is, is new rule sets every three to five years, uh, depending on how popular they think the game is. Could I ask you guys a question, by the way? Of course, though. So, I'm a massive fan of the NAF corn roster. Uh, some of you may see my Kickstarter I had earlier this year for the, uh, for the silly corn team. Yeah, I saw um, yep. what do you guys What do you guys think of the new corn roster that's been announced? I think they've tried incredibly hard not to use the word demon for the big guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, they, they already, they'd already made that decision with Nurgle, hadn't they? That's why they changed it from a beast of Nurgle to a, a plague spawn. Rot, or is it a plague rot spawn? Rot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they've already uh, moved away from demons being involved at all. But it, it is a massive rip-off of the uh, corn team on Fumble from the Secret League. I mean, I yes. don't think it is. I don't think it is. Like, yes, it's very similar, but it's it's naturally what you're going to think of. If if you turn the the, the Nurgle team into a corn team, then like mm. it's what you naturally turn up to. Except what I would have done if I was them, I would have kept them agility three plus, but just made them like passing blank or passing six plus or something, and give them a massive hit of passing. I think making the match four plus is stupid. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you, you, that's what you're naturally going to do, right? You're gonna you're gonna make the Chaos Warriors have frenzy and like just add frenzy on them. It's just obvious, isn't it? And then the, yeah. the linemen, you know, you want to make them like armor eight or armor seven and give them frenzy. And then, yeah, the pest, like pestigors turn the corn gorse and give them jugs. Like it's it's just an obvious kind of thing yeah. if you're going to make a corn team. I would, yeah. I would say. And some big I nasty think... big guy that people are going to love paying money to forge yeah. world four and paint. Yeah, I've with cores. And there we are. Thor's yeah. got it already. Brilliant, or there something you know. not I, dissimilar. Yeah, yeah. It's very similar to mine. I. I just find corn a bit. Yeah. I'm much more interested. I mean, I I didn't. I'm the opposite. Thought I I didn't. Nothing about the old corn or demons of corn, as we're perhaps now calling them, roster appealed to me. The new corn roster, it just looks that that tiny bit more reliable. That I kind of think, okay, I can see some ways I could maybe get some things done with it. See, the thing I'm worried massively about it is what I loved about the old corn team was the fact that most of them had juggernaut, or the p players that you're relying on had juggernaut. So you could, you knew that that if you rolled those both downs on the on the blitz, you could turn them into pushback. So if you had block, you could turn somebody's wrestle off and hit them down, and you know you, you're causing damage. I didn't think Losing the, the juggernaut from the from the, the blood seekers as they are now the heralds, and and from the big guy, if it, I, I can't see the big guy keeping all the skills that he had. I, I just worry that they're not going to be as reliable as as what they were. Okay, that's that's an interesting. That's that's not a perspective I'd heard, but yeah, maybe so. I mean, one of the beautiful things about right now is we we don't know, do we? No. I mean, do we even days, do we even days. feel we know what the best team in Blood Bowl twenty twenty is? Dog, 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 Undead. Dog. <laughs> well, there we go. We've had three answers, and you're all certain: Underworld, Dorf, 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 and Undead. Uh, anyone else want to put anything out there and say that's going to be top of the pile? Are Woody still Lizards? up there? Lizards. Lizards. Is that because of on the ball really helping Chameleon Stinks, Skinks actually have no, some No, purpose, they were super or? powerful before and they are still super powerful in a no-star meta. And of course Claw uh, MB no has been thing, yeah, yeah, has been has been nerfed, which was one of the things they feared. <laughs> and leaping into cages to take the ball away of the Skinks. So I Yeah, can, perhaps perhaps Lizards the, is a good show. So the Woody side of conversation, um, I haven't specifically played Woody's, but I have already felt the the power of the passing nerf, as I'll call it, um, is very significant for the Edge teams. Um, I felt it on the slam already. Is it really, really makes uh, a lot of situations tricky. So, uh, so I'm, I don't think Woody's will be, and obviously the leaping as well. I don't think Woody's will be as strong. They'll obviously still be quite strong, but yeah, I do think Woody's less so now. I, I almost think Pro Elves actually are slightly better than Wood Elves now. Ooh, um, I'm going to have to ask you to justify that, Thor. So, Sidestep is a better starting skill than Leap. Okay. Um, purely because you, you can sidestep into a cage when somebody hits you. Leaping into a cage is now 
is, is almost not going to happen. Uh, Nerves of Steel is a fantastic skill on your catches. Um, and th it's just have, having seen some games with Wood Elves and BB20 and seen similar games, this is top tournament style games. I think the standard tournament package of five, five skills and a, a secondary, as it's now called, I think benefits the Pro Elves more now than, than Wood Elves. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I it depends on I format. Can see that. It depends on format. Yeah. If you're coming at it from the NAF, like uh, Kfog was like, call me an idiot, basically for saying doors. But I don't think doors in NAF format. You know, that's a thing. But I think in like leagues with redrafting, it's doors by a mile because you can just cut down to like anything. You can cut down to seven seventy, basically, can't you? Seven to eight five. You can literally cut to seven eight five of players and rerolls, and that's it. You just cut right to the bone on redraft. It's insane. So they are absolutely. 100% the best with redraft, in my opinion, which is correct. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's other things like, you know, and there's other things like mages and stuff where you'll want to like play like a season or two and then redraft. You know, when that when that comes into fumble, like when they have the mages yeah. things, then it'll be it'll be whatever does the best over like a season or two and then redrafting or whatever. And then and then like NAF, it depends on the format and tiering and that. So it all just depends, doesn't it, really? Yeah, it's um. I mean, I, I agree. I've, I've said since the first time I read the leaks of this rule set that, that almost everything I think about this is going to depend on the format it's in, um, on whether there's redrafting, on whether it's resurrection, um, on, on you know, all, all of those sorts of things are going to change what I think is good, what I think is bad, and what's going to be at the top of that, that circle of power. Um, but are we all thinking that Woody's are knocked off number one now? Is that... Is that generally what we kind of think? Whatever it's going to end up being, it's probably not Woody's. They'll be up there somewhere, but they're yeah. probably not going to be number one. I, mean, I, I missed good. most of that conversation. So I'm going to have to put one of the kids there. Sorry. It's fine. But just in terms of Woody's, I've noticed a massive difference, right? So I've been playing quite a lot of Blood Bowl 2020 on Fumble. And then recently I've sw uh, played a few Blood Bowl 2 games. And the difference of ease that Wood Elves have in the old rule set is notable. It's definitely notable. They are a much weaker team. And is that because of the lack of vanity? Well, I mean, some people call it vanity passing, but even just the ability to pick up on anything and pass to anything, it's, is it's, that... It's everything on a 2+, plus, isn't it? And it's not everything on a 2+, plus anymore. Right. As I'm sure, you know, a K-Fool will tell you, I mean, it's just easy to coach Wood Elves, right? Just easy. Losing two sprint plus, is pretty plus, bad two, as well. Two, I, think that, I think that's pretty massive, losing yeah. sprint. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, it was just a note because having played quite a few Wood Elf teams on Fumble and doing reasonably well. Um, yeah, I'm only joking, Kay. I, I'm not, I'm not being serious. Um, but then going to Blood Bowl Two and playing a Wood Elf team and them just doing everything on a just whatever they wanted, basically, um, to a certain extent, it was just noticeable different. Uh, yeah, Larissian just uh, agreeing there with uh, with Pro Elves being, you know, if they're Tier 2 against Wood Elves in Tier 1, then then he again thinks that Pro Elves can really, you know, really make that sidestep work to their advantage in a way that Leap just isn't doing anymore. Um, I do feel the need to wrap this up. I don't want them to go on too long. And, and frankly, you guys, I mean, thanks for coming. I, I could really could talk to you all night. Um, I'm going to put a final question out there because I do want to end on Blood Bowl 2020. Um, and I, I'll start to give you some thinking time and then just we'll we'll come in one at a time. Favourite thing, ideally a surprising thing about the Blood Bowl 2020 rule set, and then the thing that you still think isn't isn't good, or perhaps you know in a year and a half when they do another rule set should be changed. <laughs> um, my favourite thing uh, that I I thought would be quite good, but is so much better than I thought it would be, and I'm going to steal this from everybody else, so I'm going to say it first, is Sneaky Git. Um, I, I almost can't think of a team that has sneaky gear access on a normal that I wouldn't take it on now or find a place to put it on. It's phenomenal. Um, it's breaking my heart that dwarves do not have access to it on a normal um, because I think it's outstanding as a skill. It, it's really it's it's become a tier one skill to me and almost an auto take if I'm building a NAF team that has a, access to it, I think. Um, so the thing I still NAF. think is terrible and, and I think shouldn't be in Blood Bowl I I guess if I had to really pick just one thing because I do think there are still a few weaknesses in this rule set I'm either not comfortable with 
or I think you know need working out. I I don't understand the nerve to break tackle. I don't get it. I don't know why we had to get rid of break tackle. I don't mind the new break tackle as a skill. You know, crap two heads, but I don't know why we've it's, lost break tackle. It's because the old break tackle didn't work with the agility two plus agility three plus, converting strength straight into a. I see. Yeah. That makes the, some the, sense. The, the, the table just doesn't work because if you become yeah. strength five to agility five plus, going well. I see. Okay. Well, that's the first answer anyone's given me that makes any sense, Thor. So thank you very much. So that's my two. Who who can come in with their two? Who's next? I could. Okay, Volk. <laughs> um, favorite thing, random skills. Because I think it's underestimated how much it does change the meta. Um, like I've been playing some some C and Fumble, good old Fumble, uh, mess around a bit. And it changes team build so much. Like, people tend to take it only on Linos, but that quite a bit, and it makes teams a lot better because it's just, like, the TV difference, if you, like, I just had a Camry team and got a pro wrestle script ball Skellington. Pretty good for 70k. Like, not a bad player for 70k. And, like, that's that's so good to have that option. And I don't think we have seen uh, the full potential yet because people don't tend to take it in positionals. And I'm wondering if there are hidden positionals where it could be really good on and really powerful. Especially in what Jim is saying, a redraft format. And dwarves tend to not rando skill, right? So maybe that's a, a slight a slight nerf to them that they don't have the opportunity. I might like I just think the random skills are super interesting and obviously the uh, star issue is what we need to figure out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um who wants to come in? I will go next. Mark. What I've been pleasantly Correct. surprised with playing a necromantic team in the tabletop stuff. Wraiths. And everybody was like, White, they can't get over Wraiths. Wraiths, sidestep, block, regeneration. Give them guard. They are a pain in the arse. Foul appearance. Yeah, and foul appearance, of course. Yeah, they are honestly, they, with your flesh golems and stand firm, they are dangerous on that front line. They, because of sidestep and stand firm, mm. unless you do something pretty pretty amazing, that's a solid that's a solid line of defense. I mean, two stand firm, two sidestep, and two frenzy. That's that's a control team, yeah. isn't it? Right there. Yeah. That's, that's I, I love I love the new. This field is team. mine now. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I was a bit surprised about, and I wasn't sure worked, was the new injury uh, dice, uh, the D sixteen. I mean, a lot more deaths. Yeah, a lot more deaths. Yeah, a lot more deaths. Just a lot more deaths. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, three guys left. Who, who? Rick, let's bring you in. Yeah. So uh, I I like the the buffs and added variation to a lot of the previous lesser teams. I'm really enjoying playing some of the stunties. Uh, I like the changes to to Kemri and uh, and and Underworld, other than Hack Fleming tournaments. Um, I, I think I struggle to play them on Blood Bowl 2 now comparatively because it's frustrating that they're not the newer versions. And I, I think uh, for the most part, a rebalance has been done really, really well. Uh, so that's great. I'm really enjoying that. I hate almost everything about the changes to passing. Uh, I could. There's so much to go into on that. I can see what they were going for. I think they've done it completely wrong. If they want to completely redo it and go for what they were going for and actually achieve that, I'd be all for it. But I think it's just awful. I'm really disappointed with passing in Blood Bowl 2020. That's a good shout. Yeah. Um, two left. Who's coming in? Jimmy? Thor? You, Rick, for stealing mine. <laughs> <laughs> you can just go with all the passing skills, Jimmy. Uh, we can oh, definitely yeah. have that one twice. So, Jimmy, let's yeah. bring you in. No, I, I actually like the star players because, as I said about the whole like you yeah. know, the whole snowball effect in, in leagues, and I think that's good that, that the, the people who get left behind have got something to bring them in. And I guess the redrafting is, is kind of a continuation of that as well, kind of that thing of trying to keep people like you know rubber banded a little bit. Um, so I guess the bad thing for me is the thing that I never experienced, which was uh, losing the D3 MVP. Because I thought that was like the best yeah. thing about 2016. Was the D3 yeah, that was MVP. yeah, yeah. I know, um, I know a lot of really leagues who've just gone, we're, we're going to stay with D3. Yeah. 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 Obviously, people can just yeah, answer this. It. it was really great for tabletop, but from like a Blood Bowl 2 CCL, and I think even like Fumble Black Box, whatever we end up with in future on those fronts perspective, 
I think it's a good change. I'm really sorry because it's not just for you. It's so nice for yourself to get to pick those, but but for your opponents, all of your opponents to constantly be picking those in a very long term format where you can play a lot of games i think that starts to get a bit silly on the team building and i actually really really like that they've dropped the from going back to crp the dead players and the mercenaries and the star players picking it up so it's only yeah. players that can play your next game i think that's the perfect change for me for for yeah, all formats is. of the game it's the perfect change for short league formats which i play on tabletop d3 was amazing but, if but, if but, we yeah, if we've got to have it random, as Rick says, at least getting it off the people you're not going to have hired is yeah. great. Um, I'm, and I'm with Jimmy; I miss it. Uh, but it it is a balance issue. Uh, and as Sick as Eggs has said in the chat, perhaps if we brought back the D3 MVP, that might throw the balance of everything else. Uh, because there's some teams that build. So, I mean, if if Lizards can yeah. avoid everything on Skinks, um, that's brilliant. Um, if I can build say that, but there's no balance in Blood Bowl anyway, and it's no. deliberately unbalanced. So yes. everyone's saying about balance. When people say but complain about Blood Bowl three not having redraft and saying, Oh, the whole game is balanced around redraft. No, it isn't. It's not balanced at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, I, I would still say that without redraft we're gonna get some really silly huge teams in Blood Bowl Three. Um yeah. but we'll see. We may not and what I was talking about Blood Bowl Three not having Chaos Pact, I know they're announced as a release team. We just now don't have a release announced for Blood Bowl Three. We've no idea when it's coming. So yeah. it, it, it may be it may be in February next year. It may be they need to put it off further. We may wait another year and not see it. And I hope that if it means it's done right when it comes, I think that's great. I want yeah. good Blood Bowl. And I want more people mm -hmm. coming to Blood Bowl and a good Blood Bowl three will help with that. So despite the fact that I'm a fumble main, a good Blood Bowl three is good for all of us. Um, it is. Thor. So, um, my favourite bits are twofold, really. Uh, I really like the changes to the kickoff table. Okay. Um, the fact that perfect defence isn't just screw you anymore. Blitz isn't just screw you anymore. Uh, throw rock isn't, you're probably going to kill, uh, kill a player because it always killed a player. And, and anybody who's ever had to throw a rock hit them kills the player. Uh, and it I, I really like that. Also, like the, the change to changing weather. So it now scatters. So it used to be just you roll an extra d8. Now scatters. So that's three d8 before the bounce. So it could really deviate from where it is just because the weather's stayed nice. And just little changes like that. And and the other one is um, we we found this out at Threadball uh, as one of the refs there. Argue the call doesn't remove the player from the pitch. You argued the call successfully. Argued the call. He stays it's right still there. A turnover, but the, but the player stays on the pitch. Yeah. yeah, I like that because it was like, well, yeah, okay, he's been sent off, but he's off for the rest of this drive. So that's it, it doesn't help me. Uh, whereas it's, him staying on the pitch could be absolutely massive. Was that different from twenty sixteen? Then, yeah, yeah, yeah he went so he went to the reserve spot. Yeah. But you could argue the call in the last rule set. But yeah. if he was successful, yeah. he went into the reserves. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Whereas yeah. now he stays on the pitch. Stays on the pitch, yeah, it's massive. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the things that I, I'm not, not massively keen on, I, I don't know. I mean, one of the comments I said on, on the Squad Chaos podcast is all the changes, if these would have been the way Blood Bowl was from the get-go, nobody would have an issue with them. Yeah. And I, I, still, sta I still stand by that. It, it's, yes, they're different. Yes, this is a different version of Blood Bowl than what we were used to. But it's not unplayable. It's still fun. It's still the heart of the game that we loved. And, and yeah, it's there's nothing I would. I'm not playing Blood Bowl because of this. What I'll just crack on and play the game. What really interests me, um, as of those six answers about the positives and the negatives, nobody's mentioned multiple rerolls in a single turn as either yet. I think um, it's good. So we've all just kind of said that's kind of fine. It's not the thing I hate. It's not the thing I love. But it's it's a change, yeah. and we've just changed with it, have we? I like it. I like it. I like yeah. it. Uh, it's yeah. certainly good for me, which is all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it mitigates against that one awful turn at the start of the game. Say you, you're playing against Wood Elves or Skaven, and you go over to pick the ball up, and you fail the pickup. Um, but you've already used a reroll because you double scored on the first block or something. And the goal runner doesn't just run around and pick up and score. Yeah. But it's it just mitigates that because you just go actually. Sorry? No, go on, Thor, carry on. 
Yeah, it just mitigates against that one turn, which could absolutely ruin the start of the game or, or put you straight on the downer. And yes, the good players, uh, some of you guys included, will be able to use this later on in the game if they haven't used those rerolls earlier on. Yeah. I'd prefer to have a chance against those against those players by not having that bad turn in the first few yeah. and having a chance in the game. Okay, I, I really feel I've pushed you all too long and too hard. So I'm, I'm going to have to say now, um, any other business before we wrap up? Yeah, I just want to quickly add on, it's important to note with the multiple re-rolls that it's not like if you don't pick the ball up, you can keep re-rolling it until you pick it up. Yeah, each action is still one re-roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was it. Anything else from anyone? Feel free. One thing to chat, um, we're keeping notes uh, of comments people are bringing up. Um, like people wanted to talk about passing or uh, nobility, how valuable they are, like how good they are in the new rule set, etc. Oh, yeah. uh, we, we are keeping notes, and uh, those issues will covered by some of the same people, some different people over the following episodes. So nothing you uh, are contributing to this is lost because chat interaction is very, 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 very welcome on this. Um, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to keep up with it. It, it, this is very much a work in progress. So a couple of announcements there. The first is, uh, Vilinich, I did see what you said. Uh, there is definitely space, but this is the first, second time I've done this. First time I've done this this way, and this was from an Andy Davo suggestion. I think it works much better. There is clearly space on this screen for me to put some banners up with things like the names of the six of us, uh, which would be handy to people in the chat. So that's definitely an innovation that you've suggested that I will try and do for next time. Um, I will be opening in my Discord a public channel uh, about One World, One Blood Bowl. There's already a private one where we sort of chat and arrange these things. There will be a public one where people can suggest ideas, can ask questions, can even suggest people they think I should be asking on uh, because I want to bring in as diverse a range of voices as possible uh, and give as much feedback as you want in there. So that's definitely something we're going to be trying to get you more involved in what you want from this. It's very much an evolution. I don't have an idea in my head as to what I want it to be except I want to chat with people I like about Blood Bowl because I like doing that. And I think there's a place for this. And as I've said, to try and bring the disparate little pockets of Blood Bowl, just a bit, at least understanding the other bits of Blood Bowl, if not feeling that we are one World Bowl, you know, one world, one Blood Bowl, because it's one game, whether you're painting it or playing it or talking about it or posting terrible ideas on Reddit. You're all part of Blood Bowl and you're all as welcome. Um, and, and I want that to be what this is about. We just talk about anything anyone wants to. And obviously there's things like the 2020 rules. And I would love to do an episode where we focus on Black Orcs and Imperial Nobility uh, because they're brand new. Um, and perhaps that's what we'll, we'll make the next one about. The next one will be two weeks from now on the 24th. Um, I'm just going to have to, because I don't 100% remember off the top of my head. So we're probably all going to freeze as I look at this, uh, which is who I have lined up for the next one already. Um, so bear with me just for two seconds while I do that for you. Uh, you may just have to stick with my voice. Oh, perfect. An alert fires at the same time. Let me kill that I auto repeat. I, oh, I have oh, it thank you, Volk. Yeah, please do. And then I can so, uh, stop us being frozen. I know I definitely won't be here. I'm it's, afraid yeah. I'll be away on holiday. It's going to be the lovely Purple Chest as our host, uh, Bazakistine, uh, by far the best North American Blood Bowl coach because it's certainly <laughs> not fly. <laughs> 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 uh, Sun0638, we got... Uh, also known as Mike Davis, you may know him by that name, a yeah. fantastic yes. Blood Bowl theorist. We got uh, the Blitzpit organizer and also pretty decent uh, and second most exciting Australian Blood Bowl coach after Sky Blue Monty, Gdanik. We got k Folk and we got returning guest Andy Davo. So uh, a few faces you've seen before, some other ones that may be new to you uh, but, but may not be. Um, I'm, I'm going to try and keep doing these every two to three weeks, depending on my life schedule. Uh, and if I suddenly have to disappear for a few months, if I you know, ever get an acting job or anything, then um, there's, absolutely this could be handed over to someone else to do. Uh, and then, you know, whatever. It, it, I think this is a nice thing to do. And if it catches and if people like it, I want to keep doing them. Uh, I think it's very different to the Fumble podcast, to the Squad Chaos podcast. And I think this is, I've enjoyed it, and I'm going to keep doing it whilst people turn up because I like talking about Blood Bowl with people. Um, everyone we've had on will be invited back again. If you've enjoyed it, please feel free to come. Uh, in our private Discord about this, feel free to drop any link you want me to put when I took the episode out. I will link the Squad Chaos server for certain. 
Uh, I'll link everyone's Twitches. I'll link your YouTube, Jimmy and Rick, and those that have them. Um, and please, you know, feel free to drop into my Discord. Uh, below this stream, there's the links to my Discord and also to the YouTube where Episode 1 is uh, and to the uh, Spotify and Anchor has Episode 1 of this as a, just a podcast. This will be going out as podcast, as YouTube. Um, and then we'll be doing another one in two weeks' time. Uh, just, just as an extra PC, I'm just thinking ahead. If Thor is going to be doing a charity stream on December the 11th, maybe it's worth putting a link somewhere for his Twitch yeah. so we can all come and watch it. Oh, 100%. Anything you've got to link, guys, I would love to put out when I put this episode out as a link. So do drop those, you know, what you want me to put uh, in the episode description. And I'll put those out on Spotify. I'll put those out on YouTube. Um, it, I won't be able to put it on the VOD. So if you want to drop them in the chat now, feel free. And if you're not in the chat, tough. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I want to thank Jimmy, Thor, Mark, Volcajo, and Rick. Uh, I, I'm so thrilled people are giving up their time for this. I hope you've enjoyed being here as much as I've enjoyed having you here. I hope and I will get those alerts sorted so I don't have to keep swapping to a different screen and we all disappear for a few seconds um, I hope people are enjoying this I'm enjoying doing them and yeah let's hope they can continue for at least a while and let's just talk about Blood Bowl um, because yeah. that's often even easier than playing it <laughs> well, th thanks for having us you're more than welcome yeah, for yeah, um, what, um, a great, what a great idea PC um, I don't think anyone's integrated yeah. themselves into Tabletop Fumble and Blah Bowl 2 as well as you have in the communities k in chat a rare contender but this, this podcast puts you over the top and it's, it's brilliant, thank you mate well uh, yeah, if I have anything to offer it is perhaps that, that I'm a gobby bugger that people seem to recognise so um, I'm trying to abuse that to just bring in people from all over. And I, I, I seem to be in a position where that kind of is working, except Reddit, who hate me. Um, <laughs> Silky's <laughs> silky silky voice in Pool Bowl, you've got me. Silky's voice in Pool Bowl. No, I think that may now go to Misspelled Tree, who's on my list oh, of people to invite yeah. in the future. Uh, her voice is <laughs> stunning. Um, look, thank you all for coming. Thank you to chat for being here. I'm sorry we're not interacting more. Again, that's something I've got to think about, how we get more of what you're chatting about and what you're asking up here into what we're doing. Uh, that was always part of the concept too, and we are trying to do it, but I'm, I'm feeling guilty we're not doing it enough. This will improve. We will get better. Stick with me, and I hope to see you back in two weeks' time. Thank you to everybody for coming. I am now going to close the stream down uh, because... Basically, I can't start streaming because my webcam either has to be here or on the OBS. So I'm going to close the stream down for a few minutes, have a cigarette, and then I'm going to come back and play a game of CCL. So I, I, I'll see if I can raid you somewhere. Um, but if you want to watch some Blood Bowl, I'll be doing that in a few minutes. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And uh, that's us done. Thank you very much, everybody. Night-night. Be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? That was awesome. Thank you.